All right. So uh, I'm not sure if any one of you is uh, familiar with Uno platform yet, uh, but I will start from the very beginning explaining what it is and what problem does it solve. And just to introduce myself, I'm a, a freelance developer, applications, uh, cross-platform, also some backend development in ASP.NET, uh, but most I'm currently contributing to Uno platform uh, as an open source contributor. So uh, that's what I, uh, why I'm actually talking about Uno platform here. So uh, for the outline, I will first introduce cross-platform application development, a little bit uh, the background, why Uno platform even exists, and then go uh, right into Uno platform, what it is, how it works, and show a lot of examples, and even give you a little homework at the end. So let's get started. Uh, Cross-platform application development is a very hard thing, and uh, probably comparable to vertical alignment in CSS. So this is uh, basically how it looks if you want to build uh, multiple applications targeting multiple platforms. Um, for if you want to go to the native native way, you have to build basically four different applications, each targeting a specific platform. So for example, for Windows, you will uh, write your C sharp code and UI in XAML. Uh, for Android, you will write Kotlin and UI in AXML. In case of iOS, it's going to be Swift, Swift UI, and in uh, web, you will write uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So it means you have to write it four times. Uh, if you have one application with many features, you have, uh, you have to write each feature four times, do bug fixing four times, uh, do testing four times. So it's a lot of work that you have to do, and you actually cannot write it on your own because you will need uh, basically four teams of developers, each uh, proficient in, in that given platform. So it's a lot of work and a lot of investment if you want to build such uh, native application cross-platform. Uh, so can we do better than that? Uh, the next step would be to share the business, business logic of your application. In this case, as we are .NET developers, um, I'm using C Sharp as an example. So we will share the business logic of our application with C Sharp and then target uh, each platform uh, each platform uh, with its own native UI language. So in, in case of Windows, we again write XAML for the UI, uh, for Android, XML, and so on. In case of the web, we can use Blazor, uh, which allows us to write C Sharp code business language and then use UI uh, in HTML, CSS. So this is much better because we have now one single language on the business logic side, but we still are not done yet because we have um, separate UI for each of the platforms. So again, if you want to build a new feature, you have to do the UI four times and it's a little bit annoying and it's a little bit more work than you should be actually doing. Um, so let's improve upon that. And uh, that's, that improvement is Xamarin Forms. Xamarin Forms uh, allows you to write your application uh, applications targeting uh, all mobile, mobile platforms, so Android and iOS, uh, plus, also, plus Windows, uh, using C Sharp and XAML. And uh, you can share your UI in XAML, so that uh, essentially removes the platform-specific UI side of things. Um, the, the small disadvantage of Xamarin Forms is that it uses a custom XAML dialect. It's not the same XAML that we are used to from Windows. So there are some different naming conventions. There are some different uh, things we have to think about. For example, uh, if you want to set maximum width, it's not really there. So you have to use some different property. There is no minimum width property and so on. So it's a little bit uh, different. Um, approach and you have to think about it if you come from the Windows background. Um, but if you look at the application, then you can see that uh, on each platform, the UI is the same, although rendered using platform specific UI controls. So for example, on uh, iOS, it uses UI button for a button. Well, on uh, Android, it uses uh, button view from Android. And on Windows, it uses, uses button element. So 
The application looks like a native application on each platform, which is an advantage if you want to have the native feel of your application, but can be also a disadvantage if you want your application to stand out and to have your company branding and uh, have it consistent across all the targets. So the Xamarin Forms team, of course, addressed this by creating uh, MAUI shell or material design. And this solution allows you to write the UI to match the material design uh, guidelines. So as you can see, the difference between iOS and Android in this case is very small. So it's, it's very much similar, much more similar than the previous attempts. Um, the disadvantage here is that the Windows side of things is not completely supported yet. And so if you want your application to target Windows as well, you will have to write some additional code uh, to leverage uh, the capabilities of win on Windows. So uh, we improved a little bit, but we're not done yet. And if you noticed, we actually lost one target, that's the web. So in, in case of uh, a Xamarin Informs application, you will have to write your, your web application separately as a, a HTML and CSS based uh, app. So um, what can we do now? Uh, the solution comes from Uno Platform. Uh, Uno Platform is a free and open source project, which was uh, originally developed by a company, company called Inventive in Canada. Uh, this company is building applications for customers um, basically on contract. So uh, they request an application, they build it, they build it for them. And uh, because they were writing a lot of cross-platform applications for Windows, Android, and iOS, they decided to uh, create some shared API contracts that they could use and just share the code instead of writing it over and over again. So this started like this. They created more and more API contracts and they then, uh, then realized that this solution could actually be a full-blown um, UI framework. So uh, from a set of APIs became a UI framework that was based on Windows API set. And from this framework then uh, became Uno platform, which was then open sourced and became a separate product that's backed by Uno Platform INC. That's uh, a company they created just for Uno Platform. Uh, the promise of Uno Platform is that it's just a single code base that can target all platforms at once. And so you can build your application one time and it will run without any changes on mobile, desktop, and even the web using WebAssembly. And the API set is not a new API set that would be just invented by uh, Inventive, uh, but it's uh, actually a port of Universal Windows Platform. So if you already built Windows applications and are you, you are familiar with uh, XAML, then you just take your web existing code and you should be able to run it on, on Uno Platform without any changes. And that's uh, probably the biggest advantage because you can build your application just once and you reuse your existing knowledge. And if we take a look at the UI comparison that we shown before for Xamarin Forms, I can go just, just to show it. So this is basically the same XAML code uh, now shown in Uno platform. You can see the XAML on the right side. So this is how it looks on UWP and now how it looks on Android, iOS, and WebAssembly. And what you, what you can notice is that there is basically zero difference between UWP and the other platforms. It, the application just looks the same way on all platforms, has the same styling and the same look and feel. And that's the advantage of a platform that you're actually building uh, the same UI everywhere. And you can fully customize it because you are, you are using the full XAML, not just the limited version that uh, Xamarin Informs has. You can use full templating and styling functionalities. So that's probably the biggest advantage if you want to have your uh, UI 
fully shared across all platforms. And uh, let's review the diagram now. So we have now single code base in C Sharp. That's the, uh, basically the business logic. Then the UI side of things, uh, that's XAML. And all the platforms can use the same code base. So that's Windows, Android, iOS, and the web using WebAssembly. And even macOS and Linux, because we have now uh, support for Linux. And soon we will have support for Tizen as well. So it's a complete set of platforms, uh, be it mobile, desktop, or the web. So you can just use your single code base and target all of it in just one, uh, just one code base. Um, so now I will just uh, shortly explain how it actually all comes together. So on Windows, you just write your Windows application without any changes. There is no Uno platform there. As you can see, the column there uh, for Windows contains WinUI, which is the Windows UI library. Underneath is .NET and Windows. So this is just self-standing Windows application. Now on the other platforms, instead of the WinUI layer, we have Uno platform, which provides the same API set as the Windows platform. And provides all the functionality. Uh, and basically just uh, compile your application against this UNO contract and it works the same way as the Windows application. Uh, to clarify how it works, um, when you write Windows application, you will have some buttons there. There's windows.ui.xaml.controls.button. A control, for example, for border, that's the same thing with border. And Uno platform provides the same namespace just inside of Uno, Uno UI nugget package. So when you compile the same application against Uno platform, it just uses the Uno UI implementation of the same thing. And all of the Windows APIs are available in Uno platform. So you don't have to write any conditional code because everything is there. And if something is not implemented, it throws not the implemented ex exception at runtime. But um, from the UI side of things, most of things are already implemented and the not implemented things are uh, usually uh, some non-UI APIs or some uh, APIs like uh, uh, enterprise APIs, which will never be implemented because it's not possible to do that on mobile. So you should be able to just take your existing Windows application recompile it against UNO, and it should work across all the targets you are uh, shooting for. So, and for the rendering, uh, for the rendering, UNO UI uh, uses the native rendering capabilities of each of the platforms. Uh, on Windows, there is just Windows Win UI. There is no UNO platform actually there, but in case of iOS, it uses UI kit to render itself. In case of macOS, it uses AppKit. In Android, it uses Android Views. In um, web, web, WebAssembly, it uses HTML and CSS. And in case of the other targets, which is Tizen currently and WPF and uh, GTK, it uses Kia for rendering. So Uno Platform supports not only uh, platform-specific rendering, but also um, direct rendering using Skia Sharp. And all of this is available across all platforms. So you're very e it's very easy to actually build a new code target in Uno. Um, and going back to what I was uh, saying about the XAML being a little bit different from the Xamarin Forms XAML is that uh, in most platforms, including Xamarin Forms, you have uh, controls like button with property named text. So the only thing you can display in that button is a simple text. Um, even though there are some new controls, probably I've, I think uh, there's uh, image button in Xamarin Forms now, but just for the sake of simplicity, there is a text uh, property. And in Uno, uh, the property is not a string. It's actually a system object. So you can put any kind of content in there be it an image, be it an, uh, a grid, which has some structure. It can actually be a nested button if you want. 
it can be basically anything and you are not limited by uh by by the capabilities of that property because it's a simple object and just uh, the button itself just renders the content uh based on what you put in i will show it on an example so uh let's do that now okay so i'll open visual studio and a first thing is that I will show you how to install a new platform because it's not available out of the box. So in the extensions panel, there is manage extensions and you can search for Uno platform there. So that's this. Uh, you can install this extension just as a normal uh, Visual Studio extension. And then in file new project, you should be able to find Uno platform, a cross platform, not library actually, but let's go here, uh, cross platform app. So this is the default template that generates a new project. I will just leave this as default and wait for it for to load. This will generate a single solution that contains a shared project for your shared code and then multiple platform specific heads. So if I collapse this, so you can see here is a shared project which contains the shared code, which is platform agnostic. And then uh, just wake up the Mac here. Too many devices. Okay, let's connect. So uh, the shared project contains the shared code and the platform projects then contain uh, just uh, the application manifest and some basic setup that allows Uno platform to run there. I'll just wait for it to connect here. And now I'll show you that um, in UWP, we have just the manifest and uh, nothing more, just the assets for, uh, for the logo of your application. So UWP is pretty empty. In case of Android, we have the main and main activity, which actually launches Uno platform native application. This, uh, this type actually comes from Uno platform. Um, in case of iOS, we have the main, again, very simply application that launches the Uno platform application. And the same goes for the other ones as well. So this is pretty simple and you will not spend too much time in these platform projects, uh, apart from setting up assets like icons and um, some branding that's required for each of the platforms. And you will spend more, for, more of, most of your time in this shared project, which contains the actual code of your application. So here's a AppZaml class. I cannot actually open it. So this is, <laughs> this is actually an error that's happening currently in Visual Studio. Uh, it should be fixed in the next update, but it's a bit annoying that you cannot open any XAML file from shared projects. And the solution to that currently is to unload all the projects in this folder, reload UWP, and now it should actually work. So let's see if it actually does. Well, it didn't crash this time. That's that's good. Yeah, so this works and this now works as well. So the application XAML is just for the general setup for the application and handles the application lifetime. So all launched, it launches the application and navigates here to the main page. And the main page is the entry point of your application. So in UWP, each uh, view into your application is a page and you can then compose multiple pages into one or even navigate between them using frames and so on. So, but, 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 but the basics are here. I will just, how do I, how do I move this? Oh, 
yeah way <laughs> all right so i will just launch this uh this is just a simple uwp application it's basically the same thing that you get when you create a blank application in in uwp so it says hello world that's pretty nice and it doesn't do anything too interesting so i will just make it a little bit more interesting here so let's do this tech panel has some padding and then we'll make a slider and let's do a button with content that uses binding so in this case i will bind the content of the button to the value of the slider control so if i zoom in oh that crashed it's fine <laughs> so there should be a slider here and we'll bind its value to the button so let's do element name slider path value so this way uh, when i change the value of the slider the button will show the updated value. Let's see how it works. So you can see that when I'm changing the value, uh, the text on the button changes as well. So this is a pretty simple application and it's nothing too interesting yet because it's just Windows. So there is no Uno platform there, uh, but let's go and try to load this Android project. So if I set Android a startup and launch this application on emulator, you should be able to see that the exact same thing that I was just showing should show up here in Android. As long as the emulator is cooperating. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's just still loading. All right. So we should be, we should see the same UI here again running. But on Android, the button is working and the binding is working. And it's the same UI as we saw on Windows. So that's pretty good. Now, I can even show you that if you rotate the screen, it reacts properly and resizes things and so on. And another cool thing, if I change the theme of the system, uh, is it possible here? Yes. So if I change the system to dark theme, okay, I have to go back. The application actually reacts, so it automatically changes between light and dark theme. Uh, so this is bound to the system dark and light uh, theming capability. And immediately when it uh, sees that the system has changed, it automatically, automatically changes and applies the new theme as well. So that you get completely free out of the box without doing any additional code, because this is part of the Windows styles and templates. And if you switch the theme, you just get the same experience again, um, but in dark theme. And that is actually available also high contrast theme for uh, accessibility reasons. So for uh for that you can even enable that and have your application with greater greater visibility or for uh, uh for users with disabilities right let's go now to ios again i will just make this a default and run it on ipad pro let's see what happens I will not show all the systems because there is a lot of targets, uh, just the most, impor uh, most important and interesting ones. And I will also show you how to 
uh, actually style controls because that's that's my one of the more main advantages of of uh, the full XAML that you can style and retemplate all the controls which are uh, just behavior on top of lookless uh, layout. So here we go. Should be up and running. Yeah. So this is the same application running on iPad. Again, if I switch to theme, I would get the same uh, experience and it's on Android, but I will not do that because I don't know how to do it in this emulator actually. So let's go back and uh, let's show WebAssembly because that's the most interesting advantage of Uno platform uh, over Xamarin forms that you can also target the web. I will set this to launch and let's see what happens. So the WebAssembly part uh, has a little bit more code there. It's just some application manifest uh, CSS file for fonts and also some basic setup here for the hosting and so on. Uh, also there's linker support. So if you want to do ahead of time um, linking and removal of unused code that you can do there. But as you can see, the application is now running in the browser and it actually works exactly the same way as on Windows and the other platforms. But when I go here to network, you can see there are no requests. This is all running on the client without any request to the server. So the only requests that happen are at the start of the, uh, at the start when the page is loading and it actually loads all the DLLs like system, then system XML and so on, uh, all the dependencies and then Uno and Uno UI. So when this is loaded, it's all running in the browser and there are no additional requests on the server. So that's pretty useful because you avoid all of the traffic. And if you are building a enterprise facing uh, application, that's a great thing to have for an admin dashboard, for example, or something like that. And you get all the, uh, all the advantages of Uno platform here as well. So if I go here to appearance and switch to dark theme, you can see that the application changes to dark theme. So this all works across all platforms and you get it for free. So that's that. And now let's go and show the templating and styling. So in the main page code, I will do page.resources and I will try to restyle the button so it looks completely different than the default uh, style on Windows. So let's do a style, I'll get type button. So this is how you style a control, you select the target type, and then you use setters to set um, speci uh, specific properties. So in this case, I will set the template and the value of it will be a control template. Uh, so if you built a WPF or UWP application before, you probably have already done this. Uh, it's the same thing, exactly the same code. So uh, if you come from this uh, background, you will be able to write window, uh, Uno platform applications right away. So I will do a stack panel, for example, then a, a rectangle with some width, right? Uh, fill, for example, red. And you can see there's our rectangle and I will display the content of the, of the control here using template binding to content. So this is a very <laughs> lame button, but it works. Uh, so I will just set background to green just to make it clear that uh, where the button is, add some padding. Uh, it's very, uh, very, very ugly, but but it works. So let's let's go to UWP and see. Um, maybe just to just to show it, show it actually reacts to click. I will add a click handler as well. 
Okay, it's another bug of Visual Studio. Um, I threw it manually. Okay, so here in main page, code behind, I will do private void test click, and I will show a content dialog. So dialog. So this is completely cross-platform code. Uh, this is exactly what you would write in a Windows application. So the dialog and the content can actually be the content of the button. So let's do sender. Routed event arcs, and then let's get the button. Enter. So this way we get the button and can output the content of the button here. And now let's show the dialog. Sync, and that should be enough. All right. So let's see what happens. Oh, that didn't compile properly. Yeah, because I'm targeting iOS, I need to go here. All right, let's go again. So now we're building UWP. And here is our button. And when I click, it actually reacts properly and shows the value on the button. So this way, works normally as any normal uh, any normal button, although its template is completely different than the normal button. So if you want to change the look of your controls, you're completely free to do so, and you're not limited by any any uh, lowest common denominator as you're used to in Xamarin uh, forms, because you're not targeting the native controls, but they are actually rendered by the native drawing capabilities but are not native uh, by the net, but they by the original nature. So, in Android, I'll just show Android as an example here that it actually does work in Uno platform because this was just Windows. And so let's see. Yeah, so. Let's set some value and click. And we have our dialogue showing up in dark theme again. So that's that's uh, basically an example how uh, a simple Uno platform application can look. And as you have you seen, I've not written any platform specific code. All of all I've written was XAML code, which is completely cross platform and uh, C sharp code which is again, completely cross-platform. So uh, th that's the goal, basically, that you don't have to think about which platforms you're targeting. You just write your Windows application and it should run everywhere without any changes. Um, so let's go back to the slide here. Um, I'll start here, yeah. So once again, this problem, swap. No. So uh, Uno UI itself provides you not only the Windows UI uh, look and feel, but you can also have material UI there. That's uh, an optional package that you can install. So if you prefer the Android look and feel of your application, you can completely do that just by installing the package and, in, and following a few uh, setup steps. Uh, Fully support is this theming, as I've shown you, dark and light theme, high contrast theme, and then the control templating and styling. So you can customize the look of your application and customize the behavior of controls, however you like. And uh, from the most interesting things, um, you can also write conditional XAML. So if you have some things that you want to show specifically on a given platform, for example, on iOS, you can write conditional XAML that will show up, show up only on iOS and not the other platforms. And then this allows you actually to put platform specific controls inside of an application. So like uh, embedding 
a native a native UI inside of your application. So if you if you have some uh, platform specific control that's built by a third party company that doesn't support Uno platform, you can just take their control, put it inside a conditional XAML, and then uh, work with it as if it was a normal XAML element. So that's that's a very useful thing to have and it allows you to interoperate with many other things quite easily. And a great way to experience Uno platform for yourself is this uh, website gallery.platform.uno, which I will open now here. Uh, this site is a showcase of all the platform uh, capability or the UI capabilities of Uno platform. Um, and you can see here, always this material and fluent tab. So you can switch between those to see how uh, specific controls look on different uh, UIs. So here we have material design. So you can see the uh, ripple effect when I click the buttons and uh, like the material look and feel of the controls. And here, we, if we have fluent design, that's a bit different now. So it looks like a Windows application and has a different uh, look and feel and different layouting than the Android version. You can even switch the theme here quite easily. So you can see how the controls look in the dark theme versus the light theme. And there is a lot of, a lot of examples here. So you can go into flyout, for example, and see how flyouts work, menu flyout. So this is like a menu, a context menu, and uh, you can even do things like nested flyouts. And all these things are built into the platform. And you can click here on the right side, there is the example XAML that you can use to replicate that behavior or the replicate that UI in your own application. Um, what's quite interesting is that we also partially support acrylic brush. So this blur effect that you can use inside your application to blur the content behind uh, a specific control. And in case of uh, Mac OS, it actually supports uh, blur behind the window. So if you have some uh, navigation menu and you can blur, uh, you can blur the behind of those, uh, of that navigation menu, uh, just as um, multiple of the built-in macOS applications do. So that's pretty nice. And it's easily achievable from just the XAML syntax that Uno platform supports. Yeah, just like this, you can do acrylic brush and just show it with some specific opacity and so on. So yeah, I encourage you to try this uh, online and click through it either on your PC or on your phone, because it should work everywhere. And uh, it shows a lot of those capabilities that we provide, but it's not complete yet, because there is a lot of things that were added lately and are not yet included in this version of Gallery. So that's coming later. Okay, let's go back to the slide here. Um, what I mentioned so far, was about the UI. So the UI controls like buttons and so on. But Uno is aiming to be a complete uh, replacement for the Windows API set. And that means it doesn't support only the UI, but also the platform specific APIs like uh, Accelerometer, uh, Vibration, Launcher, and so on. And all of these capabilities you can use not only uh, in a platform specific way, but also in platform agnostic way with just using the Windows API set. And a good example of it is on this website cut.ly slash APIs. You can go there and try it out on your phone. Uh, I will open it here. But in my case, it's gonna be a little bit uh, limited because this is a desktop PC. So I cannot really show all of the features here but at least a subset. So here, um, for example, network information, in many applications, you need to check if a API is available, if, you, if the internet connectivity is working, 
And for that, you can use the network information API, which is actually here. So you can call network information, get internet connection profile and check for internet access. And that's the same way you would do it on Windows. So you don't have to learn anything new. But if you do this, you can check if the connectivity is working. And when I now switch to offline, you should be able to see that it automatically changed because the network status changed event was raised. So that's super easy to implement and uh, you can do it in fully cross-platform manner. Uh, then we have something like uh, geolocator that can retrieve your current GPS uh, coordinates, then accelerometer that you can test on a phone as well as vibration. And uh, the most interesting example here is probably MIDI, which is musical instrument device interface. And it allows you to actually communicate with a musical instrument that you have connected to your device. Uh, so I have a digital piano here and I will uh, start it. And now I will connect it to my PC. We should see uh, that it shows up here as a digital piano. So this is USB connected digital piano. And when I play notes here, you should be able to hear at least slightly that it makes sounds. So this is, uh, this is the browser sending commands to the digital piano and playing those notes on the piano. And the same thing you can do uh, the other way around. So if you play something on the piano, it can show up in your browser and you can do stuff with that. So if you want to build a clone of Synthesia application, you can do that now in Uno platform because all this is implemented automatically out of the box. And I am not aware that any other um, framework has already this uh, implemented. So that's pretty cool. And it even actually works across all platforms. So you can do it on Android, on iOS, on macOS, and on WebAssembly. So that's that. Uh, you can definitely try it on your uh, device. And I encourage you to do so. But let's go here back to the slides. And I will show you a few more examples because what I've shown so far were quite simple examples. So let's do something more advanced. So I think many of you are familiar with uh, Calculator, which is on Windows. This Calculator application, which is now quite uh, advanced because it supports things like uh, conversions between different units and so on. But, Uno Plot, uh, but Microsoft actually uh, open sourced this application on GitHub. Uh, I think it was like uh, sometime last year. So it's Microsoft uh, Calculator. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here. So it's open source completely so people can uh, contribute to it. And Uno Platform actually took this application and ported it to Uno Platform uh, which meant basically porting the views, which was one by uh, one to one, uh, basically no differences there. Uh, they had to port some ancient C++ code that was backing the calculator processing, but mostly it was just copy paste work. And now you can have the calculator running uh, in the browser. And just switch to uh, light theme here because yeah, so this is this is how it looks on the light theme. And we can see that it's a completely functional Windows calculator running in the browser. And uh, you can even do this, uh, these conversions. So it's fully functional and it has, has feature parity with uh, some earlier version of Windows calculator. Uh, so you can try it out on your browser or even download it on your phone. There is... Um, there are links to do that on the platform.uno website here in code samples. There are links to get it on Android, iOS, and macOS, and Linux. So on all these platforms, you can now have the Windows calculator. And I definitely recommend it on 
iOS because it's better than the built-in calculator and better than other free calculator applications that are available there. So that's uh, pretty cool. And for another example, I have this channel line application here. That's basically a visualization of the channel line uh, video feed. So you can browse shows and uh, videos of the shows. And this application is currently being built by the UNO platform team and involved. So in the future, there will be support for downloading videos and uh, actually logging in and commenting and so on. So this is an, uh, a sample application that's again available across all platforms and it's open source. So even you can contribute and add some code to it. So that's that. And as a last example, I will show you something that's a little bit internal because uh, this is a sample application that's used to actually debug and test Uno platform. And it contains sample for basically all the functionality that Uno platform supports. And you can go to various samples and see how they work. So here is a tree view control and you can you know, collapse and open various items. There are other controls like tab view, for example, for tabs, which is based on the UWP version. And basically it's very similar to what we have in uh, the browser, in the Microsoft Edge browser, because it was based on that, on that experience. And so on. So there's a lot of examples in this sample application, which is uh, which is used to build Uno platform as well as to UI test on it. So there are some automated tests in the code base that run these pages and check for uh, some interaction and uh, check for results. So there is a, there's several thousands of tests that we run in each uh, build of Uno platform. So we are sure that we have no regressions when we do changes. And so, so this, this, this is the application that you will use if you want to start contributing. Uh, this is the application we will we'll use most often because it contains basically everything. So that's uh, the last example I had. And let's go to the slides. So here I have just uh, some example of the ecosystem that Uno platform has. Okay. Uh, we have uh, we are cooperating with WinUI team to bring the newest WinUI controls to Uno platform. Uh, we have also close cooperation with uh, Prism, which is a open source v MVVM library, uh, which provides great functionalities when you want to build MVVM applications. And with Uno platform, you can now do it across all platforms. Uh, Windows Community Toolkit run by Zam Lama. Uh, is supported and we have even a sample application for that and support many controls of the Windows UI toolkit. So you can basically use uh, what you have in Windows applications also in Uno. And Reactive UI uh, has also first party support for Uno platform. So you can, you can build, build reactive applications in Uno. Uh, but one of the most interesting partnerships is now SyncFusion, which provided their charting controls for Uno platform. So you, if you have some enterprise uh, application and want to show some charts and um, have some interaction there, you can use the SyncFusion charts to do that in the browser on Android, on iOS. And it's always the same code as if you were building a UWP application. So you don't have to learn anything new. You just reuse existing code base. So, and finally for the roadmap, uh, we have started support for Tizen, which is uh, using Skia Sharp rendering. And here is an example of Uno platform application running on Tizen watch. Um, and it opens doors to Uno platform running on refrigerators and TVs and, and similar devices. So it's pretty exciting. Um, on the roadmap, we have 
support for more Vim UI controls, uh, which we are adding continuously in each update. We have added tab view and navigation view lately, and we are planning to add uh, new things like breadcrumbs and pager control and uh, pips pager and so on. So there's a lot of things coming and uh, there is nice cooperation between Uno platform team and WinUI where we even do some bug fixes in the WinUI code base as we encounter them while porting the code to Uno platform. So that's pretty fun. Um, on, the, on the roadmap, we have also uh, support for more tooling. So we want to provide better experience if you're not using Visual Studio, but are, you are using Visual Studio for Mac or just Visual Studio code. So you could be able to write Windows um, Uno platform applications there without uh, without much struggle because currently there is no IntelliSense and these things. So the goal is that you could be writing your Uno platform applications in code instead of Visual Studio and uh, also support for new programming models. So for example, MVU or other new cool things. So. There's a lot of things coming. And uh, this year we will have UnoConf uh, 2021, probably sometime like uh, August. So if you sign up for that, you will see all the new things that were brought since the last year. And uh, as a final example, it really does run everywhere. And this is actually um, uh, the, the touch screen from a Tesla Model 3. And uh, as you can see, there's uh, the calculator uh, from Uno Platform running in the Tesla browser. So you can really uh, use Uno Platform everywhere. So uh, finally, if you want to play with Uno Platform without installing it, there's this uh, playground.platform.uno uh, website where you can actually play with XAML. That is this. Uh, this editor is basically what you have in Visual Studio Code. And you can actually edit it and add new things. So for this, for example, you can see there's my button that I just created. And this editor actually supports even data binding. So you can set up a JSON based data and bind it to the XAML code. So you can play with this quite easily. and there are some, some example snippets that you can use, for example, for images and other things like a oh, person picture, for example. So all these things are available in the browser, so you can play with it without actually installing everything, everything into your Visual Studio instance. All right. So the homework time now. Um, you can create your first application with Uno uh, by following this uh, first Uno app tutorial. Uh, it's it goes step by step from uh, creating the new project to having actually running a basic Uno application uh, on all the targets. And if you want to do more uh, and submit feedback or contribute, you can go to these addresses which contain uh, the public repository of Uno platform, as well as a, a series of blog posts on how to contribute and how to start actually uh, adding code to Uno platform. So it, uh, that's my description of my first PR that I did uh, about a year ago. It contains uh, all the things that I struggled with, as well as, as the process that's needed to actually contribute to your first code. So finally, I have a draw. Uh, and there is a link to a prize draw for a Uno, Uno platform a Udemy course that you can win, three of you can win, uh, you win this course for free. So if you fill out feedback for this uh, presentation, you can get this course. Uh, we will contact you or uh, Sasha from the Uno platform team will they contact you and, um, you can win. So that's it. Uh, now it's time for Q&A. I will stay here as long as you need and I will answer any questions that you might have. And uh, if you want to contact me later, there are some links and some uh, social platform 
tags that you can uh, text me on. So thank you for your attention and let's do QA. There are a few questions in the chat. Oh, but, okay. But, uh, but uh, I don't know if you want me to read them out or there's not, not a huge amount. I'm just scrolling up now. Okay. Uh, I think the first question was Andrew. Um, I might be pronouncing that wrong. Um, is it possible to add um, copy to clipboard on iOS and Android by tap? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand how do you mean by tap? I don't know if there is. Uh, Andrew, feel, feel free to unmute if you still are. Uh, we're looking at the next one. Uh, by top. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I see it now. Um, yeah. The, the, there is a clipboard API on in Windows, and it's fully supported across all the platforms. So you are completely free to do a copy to clipboard or paste from clipboard with this API. So uh, you can do it not only on tap, but on any other interaction or uh, in other time. Really, this uh, calculator app is the best. The only thing is missing is uh, uh, copy into clipboard. So when, the, when oh. you're in the device, you have a keyboard, you press Ctrl C. Yeah? I but see. When you're on iPhone, <laughs> you can't do anything with calculation you did. Right. So that's, that's probably an oversight from us that we, uh, because we didn't have support for the clipboard before, but now we have. So. Uh, it's probably just not implemented on, in the calculator, but it's available in one platform. So that's possible to do. Yeah, great. And the other thing is uh, for in uh, uh, channel nine up, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is no function to speed up uh, playback. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's uh, basically before, because uh, the media player element that's displaying the videos there is not yet uh, fully cross-platform on WebAssembly. We have quite a good support in Android and iOS, but on WebAssembly, there are, uh, the, the control that's used there is a little bit custom. So uh, it will take some time, time before the speed up functionality is there, but it will be definitely. Uh -huh, great. So it's just uh, one element, the yeah, media, uh, which renders on each platform, yeah? Yes, it's just uh -huh. one element. And it's the same API as on Windows. So uh, there is no platform specific code required. Okay, thanks. I think the next question in the chat is probably easier if I read them out for the benefit yeah. of the recording because people watching the YouTube video won't be able to see the chat. Um, I think Andrew is asking when you were showing the, the calculator app um, in, in the Git, GitHub repository, it was in C. And he was saying, so with the no code changes required, did it just lift and shift into Uno? Um, you know, just go, uh, am I still sharing? Yes, you are. Good, I will show exactly. Uh, so this is the, oh, no. So I will go to the blog because there was a series of blog posts actually about how the Uno platform team ported the calculator. So let's go here, uh, but they probably don't have to search. Uh, that's a bit problematic. So let's go here. Mm. Mm. Maybe, uh, maybe, no, this, this for Linux. Uh, um, not sure where the blog post actually is, uh, but essentially uh, what they did is that they first ported the UI, which is shared as XAML. And then for the C sharp code, there is a lot of C sharp code there. Uh, that's for the, basically for the business logic of the application. And that's, that could be also copy pasted. And the only thing that has to, had to be written was the C++ code that was there. And that's actually a very old C++ code that's doing this uh, uh, calculator operation. So uh, that had to be rewritten manually. But otherwise, like what's, what's available in Windows was ported one by one uh, by just copy pasting, maybe some adjustments here and there. 
Uh, I think the next one in the chat is by Umesh, which is, look, sounds like quite a big question. But what would you say are some of the downsides to using Uno platform as opposed to native applications? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say, uh, uh, especially on Android, the downside is the startup performance currently, uh, because there, uh, if you go native, fully native, like Kotlin <laughs> and the directly write your application there, it will start up faster because currently Xamarin uh, Android uses Mono. It has a longer startup time and uh, there is also the XAML uh, layer above it. So it takes a bit longer. I think with .NET 5, this will be much improved, uh, but the startup time is comparable to Xamarin Forms. So if you use Xamarin Forms for Android, it's going to be similar. So, but that, that's basically the main disadvantage from native, but the benefits are probably uh, over overpowering this disadvantage. And um, I'm thinking about some other disadvantages. You, you, some, uh, for example, you, we don't have support for all the platform specific APIs yet. For example, Android has a humidity sensor which is not available in Windows APIs. So if you want to do that, you will have to write your platform specific code because we don't have it supported. But uh, we're trying to support as much as we can. And uh, you should be limited to writing platform specific code only for the things that are not really ported or not really portable. So <laughs> those will be the APIs which are not available on Windows, but are available everywhere, uh, anywhere else. And for example, for Android widget, you'll have to write platform specific code again. So that might be easier if you are writing completely native application because you're not uh, above the layer of Uno platform, but uh, the pl writing platform specific code is quite easy as well. So uh, if I go to here, I will show you an example of how it looks. There is, um, Platform specific, platform specific C sharp code. So what you do is just use these uh, dash if conditionals for each platform. So if you want to write platform specific code for Android, you do pound if Android and write platform specific code there. So it's just uh, a bit more code on top of what you normally write but you, you are able to fully touch the platform specific capabilities on each platform. So you're not limited basically. And you can even embed um, HTML and JavaScript components, which is uh, shown here. So it's possible to even create custom controls that are uh, using HTML, CSS and JavaScript uh, components that are stored in the browser. So. I'm not sure if there is an image of the result. So here is uh, an example of using a date picker calendar uh, component from JavaScript inside of Uno platform. So that's prob uh, probably the answer. I hope that answers the question. I think the uh, next one, oh, actually Matt Lacey put a, link to that blog post you mentioned about the calculator. Oh, right. Thank so you. I, can, I can include that in the uh, meetup notes as well on yeah, yeah. donadoxford.com. Yeah, that's, right. that's quite interesting blog post. So definitely, definitely recommend to read it. <laughs> um, and I, I'm really sorry if I pronounced this wrong, but I think it's Amaric um, has asked, one of the sli last slides mentions speech recognition. Is this support for speech synthesis as well? Uh, speech synthesis is not yet there, uh, but I have this API planned, so I will I will actually implement it soon, hopefully. <laughs> uh, the, like the API that's that's on Windows uh, uses, I think, uh, media recording or something, which will be harder to port because that's there's a lot of moving parts there. But maybe we'll do a, a simple version of that. That will be inside of the Uno UI toolkit, which is a external library which you can install, 
and that contains some like utility code and uh, some simplified versions of APIs which are not available yet. So maybe that's going to be the solution for synthesis for now. And uh, I noticed one more question there. There's a, if there is a link to a platform specific API, I showed that uh, how to write platform specific APIs, but also for the non UI APIs uh, for many things, we should have uh, sensors yeah, here. For example, uh, here are uh, no, uh, like documentation on barometer, geometer, magnetometer, and so on. And most of these things should be uh, documented. For example, geolocator, some implementation notes, and some uh, notes on how it works on WebSM. So, so if you search through documentation, you find docs on everything. And if you don't find docs here, you should be able to find them in uh, Microsoft Docs because we are we're copying UWP. So <laughs> basically, their documentation should work on Uno platform as well. Cool. There's, there's a few more questions coming in, but I actually have one as well. So I'm going to jump in the queue. Um, you mentioned that um, you were adding support for VS Code. What about other IDs like Rider? Can you do this kind of thing? Can you use Uno using Rider? Yes, you can build uh, Uno applications using Rider. I'm not sure if there is, I, I don't think there is uh, XAML designer support, but you can otherwise do everything else in Rider as well. Like you can even do hot reload, XAML hot reload. So if you have your application running in the browser or on Android, on iOS, you can do change in XAML, save it, and it will appear in the, in the running application. So. So instead of using designer, you can use the running application live. Nice, nice. I'll, that's definitely on my list of things to play with. Uh, Andres asked, do you have the same issue that copying XAML, uh, sorry, that copying XAML template command is not available in shared project? Uh, I, yeah, probably it is, it is there because all the issues that are in Visual Studio for UWP are happening for Uno platform as well. So. Yeah, we have a lot of issues open for Visual Studio feedback, and we hope that they will fix it as soon as possible. But currently, it's not working too well. But if you want to take the uh, templates and edit them, you can either go into like the Windows templates folder. So it would be like uh, C program files, hmm. program files, Windows kits, then 10. Uh, design time, common configuration, neutral, UAP. And here there are the uh, styles and templates for, for all the controls. So if you want to take the existing style for a button, you can take it from here, copy it into your application and edit it and modify it as you want. Or alternatively, you can also find them in the Uno platform repo. So. So if you search for mm, system resources, I think. Uh, yeah, here, not this one, this one, system resources. So this is the whole set of uh, templates and styles for Uno platform. So if you search for a specific control there, uh, it's properly virtualized, so I cannot search properly, but uh, you should be able to find the control template for button here and copy it and use it in your app. Uh, edit, edit it yourself. Oh, sorry, I was muted then. Um, and Matthew, oh, how many more is there? Oh, there's not many more. Um, Matthew um, has asked, are all platforms updated in sync? Are, are any platforms treated as second-class citizens? Is there a view that perhaps the cross-platform desktop might be replaced by WASM and a browser window? Uh -huh. So for the first question, all the platforms are uh, updated in sync. We are try when we were fixing a bug, we are making sure that it's fixed across all the platforms. Now, in some cases, there are platform specifics or platform specific limitations uh, that we cannot overcome. For example, uh, some features like um, thinking right now, um, 
for example, it's in in the browser there are some security uh, consideration or security limitations that don't allow us to do a specific API. I'm just trying to remember which one, but <laughs> uh, so it's available on the other platforms, but on WebAssembly it's not implemented. Uh, but you are let known that, that it's not possible to use it because when you use it, you will get a uh, blue squiggle in Visual Studio that tells you that's not implemented on, Visual, uh, on WebAssembly, for example. So you have to write some platform specific code to do something else, for example. And so we're trying to keep all the platforms in sync, but uh, you know, some things can work on uh, some platforms, but not the others. Uh, but none of those platforms is second class citizen. So we're trying to make sure that all get the same attention and all are supported properly. Uh, and for the, uh, also that's, that's because we've seen that, uh, for example, in Xamarin Forms, UWP became second class citizen and it's basically unsupported. So, <laughs> so that's also the reason why we are trying to be uh, fair to all the platforms so that it's everywhere. Uh, for the second question, uh, yes, it's it's going to be possible to write desktop applications that uh, are backed by WebAssembly, uh, rendering and showing a basically a web view of the application. Uh, but currently, WebAssembly is still in its first years because it doesn't support things like uh, multi-threading properly. Doesn't support uh, uh, garbage collection too well. So these things are going to improve over the, over the next months and so on. So uh, it's currently better to actually target uh, desktop using uh, WPF, uh, UWP or GTK support for Uno platform. We support all these three. So even if you're uh, targeting Windows 7, you can use Uno platform and uh, use uh, Uno platform to show your application there. But in the future, yeah, definitely it's going to be possible to use WebAssembly as well for these scenarios. Uh, so Matt Davison is asking, oh, I like this question actually. Uh, is this inbuilt support for generating deployments for each platform to release to app stores? And it's not built in. Um, you can you can uh, deploy as usual through Visual Studio by right clicking, doing publish and uh, you know, associating with store and so on. So this, this is possible, but uh, if you are looking for something more automatic, uh, there is a solution um, by Nick Randolph. Uh, it was uh, mobile pipelines, I think. Uh, so let's search again in blog post so no platform he had a um, series of blog posts where he was showing how to set up a Devo azure devops pipeline yeah pipeline templates that's the one so he has actually a uh, tool that allows you to easily build those pipeline templates that allow you to automatically build your application and then deploy it on uh on App Center and then even on the store. So you just set up the stages of the build and uh, a lot of things are done automatically for you by the pipeline templates. So that's this, I'll put it here, the link. So this can be used. And for the web assembly part, you can just use um, Azure, Azure deployment step on Azure DevOps to push the application to Azure and host it there. Cool. I think this is the last question and it's from Matthew Brooken. Mm -hmm. Am I right in thinking that the desktop applications would have access to the full file system via the normal .NET API rather than sandbox type setup that I believe UWP has? Obviously these apps wouldn't be portable to mobile or web. Yeah, so in case you were uh, talking about UWP application, that's just UWP. That's the limited uh, sandboxed version of, of the application. If you were talking about uh, WPF target 
or the GTK tar target, so Linux and Windows, those should have uh, full access to uh, the full, full file system. And on the other platforms, Android and iOS, again, that's sandboxed, so limited. But uh, we're trying to actually port as well the uh, file system access through storage file that could be backed by the Android uh, and Android, I don't know the name right now, the, there's a special API set that allows you to access uh, some file system location that that user has given you access to by a file picker. So if you pick a folder, then you have permission to it and you can write into it. And the same thing exists on, on iOS as well. So uh, we are trying to pour these functionalities too so that we could have a more functional file system out of the box. I think that's all the questions. So um a big everyone feel free to unmute a big round of applause thank you very much martin thank you <laughs> we've got a few web webcams on work <laughs> thank you oh someone's unmuted with lots of buzzing in the background but <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so, that's a phone <laughs> so seriously a massive thank you martin for joining us i've okay, not actually had i'm, I'm not happy had, to do that <laughs> i greatly appreciate it's my it. favorite topic so <laughs> i'm happy to talk about it yeah, well, there's not... a lot of things coming still. So I definitely recommend joining for UnoConf this year. There'll be a lot of things, a uh, lot of new things. Well, maybe so... we'll have you back next year if you if you can come yeah, back. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely need to play that. Playground website looks very use useful as well. They can just jump on and um, play around. Yeah, there is an interesting thing that like you can try. I'm not sure if it works currently, but it worked before so here in the um, main side there is uh, right here opening git port and you can okay have to login probably okay so this allows you to actually edit and contribute to uno platform right from the browser uh, it's pretty crazy how it works but <laughs> it's a webassembly application uh, called bit git port that uh, actually loads the uh, loads the repository itself, and you can edit the code inside, and then even debug from the browser. Open it in a separate browser window and do hot reload XAML right inside the browser. Everything works, so it's pretty crazy. And <laughs> and we how actually have it on on the pull request as well. How have I not heard of this? This is amazing. <laughs> it's very amazing. So if you open a pull request, then there is a review in Gitpod button. So if that's it's, if it's a, a WebAssembly commit or WebAssembly change, uh, the reviewers can e even debug it and test it in the browser without actually cloning the code, running it locally and, and checking there. So it takes a while to load, but yeah, here we go. So this is basically Visual Studio code running in the browser. And you can uh, do debugging, but I'm not sure how to do it right now. So, yeah, there is, yeah, so there is some guide to do it. Uh, there's multiple steps involved, but <laughs> but it works. So, even <laughs> even a hot reload. So, so, Gitpod is that essentially an an alternative to uh, GitHub Code Spaces? Yes, yes, basically an alternative. And they were here before GitHub Cool Spaces. This is actually a all like, like longer tested thing than, than, than that. So I think it's still more capable than GitHub Cool Spaces. Let's have a look at that. Cool. Um... Right, so I'm just going to repeat what Matt said in the intro. So a big thank you to all our sponsors. So that's um, Cricklo and Everstack, and then obviously all the prize draw sponsors as well. So JetBrains, Manning Books, and Packet. Um, and then to the to the winners, <coughs> we'll send out um, details of how to claim your prize um, probably tomorrow or some point this week. Uh, also, thank you, Matt, for the kind words about the podcast, the intro. 
Uh, I'll transfer you the money for that later. <laughs> if, you would, if you would, please. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, if anyone's interested, the next episode, which we're going to record on Friday, and there's going to be four of us talking about F sharp. So I'm quite looking forward to recording that one. It should be quite a good one. Um, as Matt said, we haven't yet announced the February meetup yet, but we'll do that as soon as possible. So we'll announce that in the usual places. And then, as usual, we all, we all tend to hang around um, here for a virtual pub session afterwards. Uh, so feel free to stay online and join us. Um, and of course, like feel free to unmute yourselves and webcams are encouraged. And everything after this point isn't um, published on YouTube. It's just the talk itself that's published. So uh, don't and don't worry about that. If you if you were thinking about putting your webcam on, that won't be published. Um, so yeah, thank you for everyone for attending. And um, thanks again, Martin. Are you free to join us at the virtual pub or do you have to shoot off? Yeah, I can, I can join for a while. Nice, yeah. excellent.